Readers, you have been doing some great work, some complicated work. You may have been noticing that parts of your book that you didn't think were important at first turned out to connect later. Or you found that really key passages had connections to lots of other parts in your book. Today you're going to keep thinking about parts that may seem disconnected, but that actually play an important role. Specifically, let's think about descriptive passages in literary nonfiction. Today I want to teach you that authors of informational texts stretch out descriptions intentionally. Readers study these parts closely, envisioning them, noticing word choice and images, analyzing details, and thus gain new insight into the ideas, themes, and issues the book explores. Readers, I know that when you're reading fiction, you're used to noticing the descriptions of setting and paying attention to descriptions that not only reveal a time and a place, but also give a particular feeling. These descriptions set the tone and help the reader feel what the characters might be feeling. Well, nonfiction writers do this too. Let's try a bit of this with the first minute of the documentary about a baseball team. You're going to notice a baseball field. Ask yourself, what kind of place does this seem to be? Go back to the lesson platform and watch the first minute and 20 seconds of San Quentin's Giants. Do you see how the filmmaker is giving us very particular images of this baseball field? We can see the fences up around it, but we're not seeing fans in a stadium watching. The players seem very focused on the game, and really it kind of seems like the only thing that's happening. It's not the most beautiful open field. It's kind of cramped and barren. Here's the thing. Often in nonfiction, an author will introduce a setting and you'll start to understand a little about the place and time. Just like in this film, we already see that it's a baseball game and we get that the players are serious about playing. We could easily feel like we understand enough about this place. But in the next scenes, the director shows us more, and we have to pay attention if we want to know more about the people who play baseball in this environment and about the place itself. Remember that a setting is the physical surroundings plus the social and psychological environment. Let's keep watching this mini documentary. And I'm telling you, we're about to get some more details about this setting, and you should feel it change your thinking about this place, about what it feels like to be there. It might also shift your understanding of the men we saw already and their love of baseball. As you watch the video, pay particular attention to the images themselves and listen closely to how the men describe their experience of the setting. Go back and watch the video again, the first three minutes and 39 seconds of San Quentin's Giants. Now take a minute to think about this. How did this setting description shift your thinking about the feeling of this place, about what it's like to live there and play ball there? Be sure you refer to specific images and to the men's reflections in your thinking.
I want to give you some examples of making sure that you're being specific about your thinking. So be sure to say why the images of the narrow cells made you think that it's an uncomfortable and depressing place to live. It may seem obvious, but saying it will help clarify your thinking. You may also think what in the film gave you the idea that people here don't trust each other. Readers, you've done a ton of work to study these parts closely. You've envisioned them, noted the author's word and image choices, and analyzed the fascinating details the author included. This careful studying serves a purpose. It can give you new insight into the ideas, themes, and issues a text explores. I want you to go back to the documentary one more time. And you're going to watch the first minute and 20 seconds again. It should seem different to you now. Get ready to answer this question. What new insight do you get into the ideas, themes, and issues of this video now that you understand the setting more deeply? So you've watched the clip again. Now what are you thinking about the central ideas, themes, and issues of this video? Use what you know from the scenes from inside the prison to say more than you did after watching this the first time. Wow. Compared to what you might have been thinking at the beginning of today's lesson, your thoughts are now much deeper. You might have said that it seems like one central idea in the text is that baseball gives the prisoners the illusion of freedom, that the baseball field now seems really spacious and free compared to what we know the prisoners are used to in their cells. This hints at the bigger issues of freedom and confinement. You can do this in your own books. You can reread a part after you've studied a descriptive passage closely, noting the new insights it gives you into the bigger ideas, themes, and issues in the text. I would guess that many of your books have descriptive parts that you may have skimmed through quickly. When you find one, study the author's word and image choices closely. Notice unusual details and ask, why did the author include this detail? Remember that it will often connect in some way to the central ideas, themes, and issues in the text. It could be you'd like to start your work today by finding one of those parts and rethinking it. You'll want to add this new strategy to your reading notebook. Study and learn from descriptive passages. Consider the author's word and image choices. What tone does the author create? Notice details and ask, why did the author include this detail? What does it teach me about the central ideas, themes, and issues? Once you've got a plan, head off to get started.